G'day guys, thanks for tuning in to Nev's Garage and this episode of the Megasquirt Project. Now in the last episode, we put our new optical trigger wheel in the Dizzy and set it up so that it's got much better resolution over cam and crank angle now, which was great, it's working really well. Now this time, as promised, we're going to be starting to set up the EA82 with closed loop idle control. Now why are we going to do that? Well, I'll show you the OE idle air control valve or air bypass valve that they have this is I've got a brand new one here from Subaru this would be a good example for you this is the cold start air bypass valve that they have fairly unique to this model um, some other Nissans and other makes have a valve similar to this and some of the European cars have a Bosch valve like this. Now how this works, it's got a bimetallic spring down this shaft, sort of like a finger, that as the, uh, as the engine and the heater coil heats this bimetallic finger up, it kind of just shifts sideways like that and it spins a shutter plate around. Now I'm not sure if you can see it in there, but you can see the shutter is partially open. And as this warms up by both ambient heat and coil heat, that shutter slowly closes. Now they're very unreliable. Um, they only work when they're cold. So once the engine's hot, you're relying on just the stopper screw on the throttle body to control idle. And also as these get old, the finger moves to different extents and so forth. So, all right, we're gonna do away with this completely. And we're gonna be fitting a remote stepper idle control valve which we're going to be able to fully control with mega squirt and what they call closed loop mode okay so let's get our bibs and bobs ready and let's get into it so i'm going to do that by the means of this raceworks remote stepper so this comes with a remote block for the stepper motor stepper motor and the wiring connector for it so let's have a look at it Then we have our block. It's been machined out of a billet. Here we have our idle stepper. Now this is the idle stepper from a GM C12 or C14 NZ engine from an Opel Corsa or Holden Barina. And it comes with the wiring connector and the crimpons. Absolutely no instructions. So I guess the first order of business will be to just figure out the wiring of the stepper. So the mega square wiring uh, booklet will give us a pretty good inkling on that. So first I'm going to open up, open up the stepper packer. I'm going to leave the retainer on the pin tool. Okay, so we're going to test it here. Um, inline O ring steppers, which is what this is. We have two possible arrangements. Alright, so I'm going to draw a little pin out here of it. saying we should measure about 50 ohms across the coil. So we're going to see if we've got a coil here and here. Okay, 
50 ohms, yeah. And then a coil on this side. Yeah, 51.6, 50.4, and then across the middle, we've got nothing. Cool. So I'm going to wire it as per this diagram here. So I'll draw another pin out. How's that for rough as guts? Alright, so I guess now the next thing is some wiring on the car. Alright, so now I'm going to add the four outputs for the stepper. Alright, so it's going to be on pins 25, 27, 29 and 31. And that's them. Cool. So they're going to be our, our stepper wires. So here's some wiring I tucked away that I ran through from the boot when uh, I put the Y band in. So this is a 7 core cable. I'm going to use four of these cores to run the IAC. Pin out. That's our wiring diagram for the IAC. Now to hook it up to the other end at the Mega Squirt. Alright, so back in the boot again. And now it's time to just tie the other end of the 7 core cable into the Mega Squirt. There we go. Alright, so we better put the IAC in the block now. So it's got two screws that retain it, and they're both different sizes so that the valve can only go in the right way, which is that's pretty clever. Alright, now I'm going to take the retainer off the end of the IAC. Now, one thing we need to look for here is if the IAC turns freely by hand or if it's locked. Okay, it doesn't. That means it's a worm drive IAC. So it's only on when it's stepping. So it's normally off. So remember that for later. First of all, let's put a bit of vas. It's nice, lines up with the holes good. There we are, so that's it sort of assembled now. So it's quite a good size little unit, not too big. Um, so yeah, what we need to do now is um, plug it into the Mega Squirt and see how it goes. So part of this test is uh, setting the valve up so that it'll move in steps and then measuring how many steps it is between fully open and fully closed so that it can be calibrated. Um, so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use the um, clamp on dial indicator from my brake lathe and we're going to use the dial indicator to measure the steps and the movement of the stepper.
All right, let's plug it in and try it. All right, so here it is, ready for testing. Output test mode, idle valve. I'm going to put this on 100 for a start. I'm going to see if it moves. Oh, it does. Cool. There it goes. In and out, in and out, in and out. Okay, so it's working. That's cool. Alright, let's just close that. Let's go into here. Right. So it is working now. Let's try some settings. Idle control. Alright. Okay, so we're going to keep it on open loop. Alright, so I'm just going to put this up by one until it stops moving. It's going to be moving there. And that seems to be fully open. So I'm going to bring it up step by step until it stops moving. That's it, 110 steps. Is there a dollar gauge there? I don't think it is. No. So that's where, that's fully extend, that's closed. That's the valve closed at 94 steps. So homing steps, we only need 106. position 96 so that's fully closed that's fully open fully closed fully open fully closed fully open Fully closed. Fully open. Fully closed. Fully open. Fully closed. Fully open. It's going to increase that pulse width. It didn't seem to want to behave properly down. Um, 
fully closed. Oh, still did it again. Good now, it's a bit slower, but it's working good. Six is still a magic number. One hundred six still sends it home. Cool. Okay, so idle control. We're using three milliseconds. First step five. Minimum steps. I'm going to bring that back to one. Homing steps is 106 let's just make it 110 to be safe homing direction um, open On and off again. <clears throat> so it looks like it's going the wrong direction, so I may have to switch the polarity of that. Alright, so I'm just going to swap 1A for 1B and 2A for 2B. Alright, so what I've just done then is swapped the wires around. I put 1A in 2A, 1B in 2B and vice versa. So now the valve should open the correct way. Okay, so I'll set it to home at close. Let's try it. Home position. Ah, yes, it did. Cool, and I will test run position. Yeah. Put in here ninety four. And that should be pretty much fully open now. Yeah. About ninety six is fully open. So cool. Now it goes closed when I home it. And then 96 steps and she's fully open. So 
So with a homing step setting of 110, no matter where the valve is, it's always going to close. And now it's going the right direction too. So yeah, cool. Time to um, try it with the engine running, I reckon. Alright, now we're going to put, the, put some barbs in here. Now these have quarter inch NPT barbs, which are hard to get in Australia because we're, we're all about the BSP. Uh, so you may have to special order them. So I've got one, one right angle and one straight. Now I'm just going to put some thread tape around them. I'm going to put the elbow on the bottom. I'm going to put the straight out the side. I'm not going to fully tighten this up at the moment because I may end up changing the position of fittings. So just firm away for now. All right, guys. So that's pretty much all we've got time for in this episode. So next episode we're going to fit the remote stepper idle control valve, and then um, you know start setting it up in Tuner Studio and make it really work. So make sure you jump onto our socials at Gossam Media, follow us there, and also subscribe to us here on our YouTube channel. That way you'll be notified when the next great episode drops. Until then though, thank you for tuning into the Mega Square Project here on Nev's Garage, and we'll catch up with you next time.